And Kevin has told the truth about Julian so brilliantly in this book. We had to have him on. He's the author and co-host. Uh, he's the author of Guilty of Journalism, The Political Case Against Julian Assange, and co-host of Unauthorized Disclosure and curator of the Dissenter newsletter. Kevin, thank you for uh, joining us. Let's start with uh, Julian and your, uh, your book. Uh, when did you decide to write it? How long did it take? And give us the uh, essentials of the case you're making. Yeah, the book is a long-term project. It goes back to the reporting that I did in 2012 and 2013 on Chelsea Manning, who you might recall is the whistleblower who provided the documents to Julian Assange and WikiLeaks that were published, for which he's been criminalized for sharing this information with the world. And uh, it, it contains uh, reporting that I did on U.S. whistleblowers like CIA whistleblower John Kiriakou, Edward Snowden, um, uh, Jeffrey Sterling, a CIA whistleblower, uh, Daniel Hale, a drone whistleblower who right now is being held in a U.S. prison in conditions that are typically uh, for terrorists. So much like Julian Assange being in the Belmarsh high security prison, we have a drone whistleblower here in the United States who is getting this communications management unit treatment that perhaps Julian Assange will be subjected to if he were detained or imprisoned here in the United States. Uh, so uh, I, I started this, uh, this is a culmination of a lot of work, but really with this looming trial, which you know we have to, as you said, we're in the witching hour, you have to admit that we're getting extremely close to that moment in which there won't be options available for Assange to prevent him from being put on a plane and brought to the United States. So I wanted to make sure there was a book available here for everyone who's a US citizen in particular, but I'm sure it will be beneficial to those throughout the world to read and understand what's going to happen when the US prosecutors bring him into a courtroom in Alexandria, Virginia and arraign him and then put him through a one to two year ordeal at least and try to put him behind bars for a long time for sharing with us a wealth of knowledge that I think has been beneficial to many, many people. Now, uh, some people will be saying to themselves, well, he'll get his day in court and we'll be able to uh, hear what he has to say, maybe even see it. But that's not true, is it? Yeah, no. And in fact, that's why I wrote the book, because it raises a whole range of issues, which, yes, we've heard about them minimally, just a, just a bit from his defense attorneys in the extradition proceedings. But once he gets to a U.S. court, they will, they will be deemed irrelevant by prosecutors as well as a judge. Uh, you have to understand that the U.S. court system, most of the judges are extraordinarily deferential to the U.S. security agencies. Uh, and that would include the CIA, which I think has been a huge driver in bringing about the moment in which U.S. prosecutors finally charged him. And uh, that I mean, we, we know that the first charge was filed in December 2017 while he was being spied upon uh, by UC Global, which was supported um, by the CIA. They had an informal or formal partnership that was ongoing in which they were able to know about the audio and video recordings that were being taken by UC Global. And so he's going to come into this courtroom. He's going to want to raise all these extra issues beyond the fact of whether he is guilty of violating the Espionage Act or not, which you shouldn't even have to bother with because that is a U.S. law and Julian Assange is an Australian citizen. So why should an Australian or someone who is a foreigner have to follow a U.S. law? Why should he be criminalized? Aside from the fact that he never signed a security, uh, uh, a, a non-disclosure agreement, which you do in order to get your security clearance. So Julian Assange never had a responsibility or an obligation like Chelsea Manning or John Kiriakou or Jeffrey Sterling to keep information secret, he could publish. We know that under the First Amendment, 
here in the United States, we have protections that say that you can publish information, even hacked materials, you can publish that information. And yet Julian Assange is being punished. And in a courtroom, he'll only be able to argue that he didn't violate the Espionage Act, which gives him a very, very narrow means for defending himself. He won't be able to say, oh, the CIA targeted me. Oh, this is a political case. Oh, my health is de deteriorating and I shouldn't have to go through this. Any of these other things that we have heard and uh, seen addressed in the extradition case. And of course, uh, this is not a case that's going to be heard in you know, in New York or, or in San Francisco. It's going to be held in Alexandria, Virginia, for a reason. It's a company town. Yeah, and so he'll go through the district in which, uh, you know, over a decade ago, it, Dana Priest and William Arkin, they called it Top Secret America. And in this, in this region, you have all these people who work for security contractors, they work for the CIA, the NSA, they're... They have military families. They work in Washington. They could be staffers on Capitol Hill. Maybe they're lobbyists for some of these defense or security firms. Who knows? But they're going to be part of the jury pool. And if Julian Assange goes with having a jury in his U.S. trial, were he to be put on trial in the United States, they will be prejudiced already because you have to understand that while this is faded from our memory, there are still very raw emotions within these U.S. security agencies. They'll talk about this as if it was like the attack on Pearl Harbor when they had to deal with WikiLeaks documents being published. And they put together task, force, task forces and there, there was panic. And this is the same way they feel about Edward Snowden and the disclosures that he gave us on NSA mass surveillance and how our global privacy was being systematically violated by the U.S. government and its agencies. And, and so you just have to understand that there's not a lot of range available for Julian Assange to defend himself and to ensure that he will have fairness. If it's not a jury, he's going to get a U.S. judge, who I think I already made clear is going to be very deferential to these U.S. security agents who are telling these U.S. prosecutors Forget about what the risks may be to press freedom. Forget about the risks to free speech or transparency and, and the flow of information. We need you to exact revenge on Julian Assange to make it clear that we will not tolerate our secret documents being published by organizations like WikiLeaks. Although they can sit in a garage in Wilmington, <laughs> Delaware, maybe we'll have time to say a word or two about that. Uh, but help us with this conundrum, Kevin. The New York Times, certainly, the Washington Post, presumably, uh, published the stories that Julian Assange uh, brought to us. They have a First Amendment right to publish them. No one would dream of putting the uh, editor or the chairman of these uh, powerful newspapers on trial in this case. So there would have been no story if Julian hadn't given them the story. They published the story. If it wasn't a crime to publish it, how can it be a crime to have handed over the notes on which the newspapers published the story? Yeah, you make a very excellent point. And in fact, in my book, I make it clear uh, with three specific examples that there have been media organizations that are guilty of aiding and abetting this prosecution. Uh, I have an example of, of, of CNN's coverage. Uh, I have an example from The Guardian because David Lee published the password in his book that allowed for those U.S. state embassy cables to now be out in the wild, putting all kinds of people at risk, human rights activists, um, informants, uh, people who the U.S. State Department claimed were vulnerable. That was because of David Lee, who was an, ex an, an editor for The Guardian. Uh, so I have those examples. But more broadly, uh, there is a way, there's a language in which the New York Times speaks about Julian Assange and how they collaborated with Julian Assange that 
makes him vulnerable, makes it easier for U.S. prosecutors to target him. They say he's a source because he shared documents with them. But that is a very uh, stupid way of talking about Julian Assange because it's not reasonable. He is not the originator of the documents. Chelsea Manning is the source. Chelsea Manning had the documents as a U.S. military intelligence analyst, submitted them through the WikiLeaks portal to Assange and WikiLeaks anonymously, and then they went through and authenticated those documents, and then they partnered with media organizations and chose to work with the New York Times, The Guardian, and Der Spiegel initially on those warlock documents. And then they had many more organizations that they worked through, worked with on the state embassy cables. Now, the New York Times doesn't want to be held liable. They're too afraid of the U.S. government that they're going to come for them and try to pursue them for holding the warfare state of the United States accountable. And so they say, Julian Assange is not a partner. He is our source. So we do not have to treat him as an equal. And then what they do is they make it very easy for the CIA to target Julian Assange, to treat them as not a journalistic organization. They make it easy for the Justice Department to turn around almost a decade later and issue these charges. And so where we're at is partly the responsibility of the U.S. press that has us talking about Julian Assange as something that he is not, because he very clearly is a journalist, no matter what you want to say about how you dislike his work and the way he opposed U.S. empire. Now, um, there's another issue here. Call me naive. I could see what was in it for someone like Pompeo to be literally planning to murder Julian on the streets of London, outside Harrods. He, they had drawings, they had uh, blueprints for the murder of Julian Assange in London. I could see why someone, some twisted warmonger like Pompeo would have that kind of mindset. What I'm wondering is, what's in it for Joe Biden? What's in it for the Democrats? Haven't they got enough trouble without putting Julian Assange on trial? The problem, though, is that there isn't any risk politically to Joe Biden if he advances this case. There aren't any voices in the Congress who really care that Joe Biden is pursuing uh, a case that he inherited from President Donald Trump. There isn't anyone saying, oh, Attorney General Merrick Garland, you're different from Bill Barr. You're different from Attorney General Jeff Sessions who had this deep hatred for leaks that motivated him to not only reopen the case against Julian Assange, but go after leakers at a rate far higher than what we saw under President Barack Obama, which is impressive because he actually had the uh, distinguished honor of being someone who prosecuted more people with the Espionage Act than all previous presidential administrations combined. Um, and so, you know, the, 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 the fact is that Joe Biden has nobody in the establishment telling him that this is going to cost you if you prosecute Julian Assange. I mean, until there is some kind of a political risk to him, he's going to stay focused on these other things that, you know, are, are far more in his peripheral vision, like uh, what you just said about the classified documents that were found uh, and uh, the other investigations that Republicans are talking about, many of them that don't have a lot of merit in my view, but they're important because they are uh, they have a scandalous tinge to them that means that you must pay them some kind of an attention. You have to deal with a divided Congress. And so what the security state apparatus of the US wants to do in bringing Assange to trial in their act of revenge, uh, he's not going to stop it because to make them angry is far more of a problem for Joe Biden than it is to take a stand and protect the First Amendment and press freedom principles. Well explained, Kevin. Where can people get your book? 
Uh, the book is available from Seven Stories Press. You can find it online. You can get it wherever books are sold. It's available for pre-order right now. Um, you can also find a way to get copies by being a subscriber of my newsletter, which is free at thedissenter.org. Thanks very much for joining us. Very good Kevin talking Kevin Gostola, you. Thank you. author of the great new book on my friend Julian Assange.